Hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. Lovely to have your company. My name's Vicky. For those of you who've not met me before, it's normally not very often that Rebecca Reed really lets me loose on Yarn Lane. And I'm really, really excited about the show actually because we're going to be trying a whole new skill and hobby to Yarn Lane, which is very exciting. Now, just in case you are new to us, as this is only sort of probably, I'm going to say, the 10th show. Still relatively new. Um, we're about a month old. So if you do want to shop with us, then it's the same account details that you use on Sewing Street, or you can still sign up. You can, of course, go onto the Yarn Lane website and log in as normal or create a new account, uh, yarnlane.com. It's the same postage and packaging. It's We're still involved in the 12 Days of Christmas event, like Sewing Street as well. So those of you that have been shopping over on Sewing Street or on Yarn Lane between the 1st and the 12th of December um, then it is uh, well if you're purchasing six days or more it doesn't need to be consecutive days but if you're purchasing for six days or more then of course um, you are eligible for free postage and packaging through the whole of January very exciting so new phone number uh, you can see it there at the bottom of the screen 0800 4 700 600 uh, this the Yarn Lane app you're probably still speaking to the same people it's just a different phone line number so uh, is there anything else that I need to mention, Kat, before we introduce these kits? Live on Facebook, of course, if you do want to like our page, um, our, or our, we've also got a Yarn Lane fans page as well, which is getting very, very popular. It's building rapidly. So the new technique that we are doing is punch needle. Um, it's the first time that I've seen punch needles, and it, it, these are really, really achievable kits. I've been promised by Sam that I'll be able to do it. In fact, her nine-year-old daughter can, uh, can punch needles, so very excited for these. And they come in the most beautiful kits. So we've got the tulip, we've got the rainbow, and we've got the cats. Now, if you're thinking for gift ideas for Christmas, we are offering, uh, still offering delivery for Christmas. So they are put together so beautifully, and this is what you're going to be able to make. I mean, it looks so complex to me. It really, really does. So any questions that you've got, get them in, get them in, get them in. But I'll be asking Sam all of the beginner questions as well. And inside the kit, let's dive in and see what we get. It's the first time I'm looking in here as well. So it's a nice goodie bag full of everything that you need. I was talking to Rebecca about this show actually, and she said, look, anybody who is starting up completely, if, you are, uh, if you've never done a punch needle before and you're thinking, right, but I don't have the right tools, I, you know, there's probably still other bits and bobs that I'll need to get. The great thing about the kit, the Adventures in Crafting kit, have everything that you need to get started even if you are a complete beginner. So Sam has even drawn out every template for you. That is attention to detail. So you can see that she has drawn, because I'd just be, that's what I'd be worried about. I'd be thinking, I'm never gonna get my cat to look like that. So if you're worried about the drawing side of it, you can just do the fun part. The drawing's already there for you, um, which is real attention to detail. So it's all there, ready mounted, ready to go. Plus then you're getting, all of your yarn, everything that you need, we'll go through with Sam what all of the tools are. It's the first time I've seen the uh, the punch needle tool and you're getting all of your instructions. Include your template, your Millwood's adjustable punch needle, you also get your 20 centimetre embroidery hoop, uh, you get your cloth and you get your yarn. Of course you can watch back today's show but it does have full comprehensive instructions included in the kit for $34.99 for any ages, for any skill levels, everybody have a go. Already gone straight into baskets, we knew the cat would be popular, in fact I think this was one that was designed especially for us because our Rebecca Reed loves cats and um, she did ask Sam particularly can we have a cat? Can we have a cat? Um, so the yarn is wool and alpaca mixed wool yarn, which is absolutely brilliant. We'll talk about that more with Sam. Then you've also got your monk's cloth in there as well. Um, everything that you need to get started, plus even your button. Uh, so that is to make this one, which is your lovely cat. Oh, it's got such lovely texture to it. I feel like I don't, I shouldn't touch it, but I want to. Um, so that's the cat. We also have the rainbow. Now I must say, the year that we've had, 
Rainbows have been, oh, just been what have got us through, haven't they? Uh, they're so symbolic. And I think for anybody who wants to make something, you know, t with 2020 in mind, maybe to gift for somebody who's been working through the whole pandemic on the front line of the NHS, this would be a beautiful, beautiful project. Just as a bit of memorabilia for the strange but historic year we've had. So inside the kit, as always, from Adventures with Crafting, they come in a beautiful bag as well, everything. If you are gifting it, tell you what, that is a lovely bag. So you get your punch needle, you also get, which is adjustable, we'll talk about it uh, and why it's important and what you use it for. You also have your rainbow, which is already drawn out for you, already there on your monk's cloth. Plus, you're getting your embroidery hoop, you get your templates, uh, sorry, your instructions, everything that you need to get started, plus all of your yarn in beautiful colours. I mean, really beautiful colours in this, all of the colours of the rainbow, your beautiful rainbow shades. £34.99. So, the final kit before we head over to Sam, because we are going to learn all about this technique from start to finish, how we use all of the new tools that we've got. So don't worry, I'll jot down today's date so when you've got the kits home, you can, uh, you can you know, do it along with Sam as well. These are beautiful. These are beautiful. Um, now this, again, looks completely different. This would be amazing wall art, wouldn't it? I mean, they are absolutely beautiful. Inside, you have your instructions. You still have everything that you need to get started. So for somebody who is a complete beginner like me, it's a new technique to yarn lane. So Rebecca wanted to make sure that everything that you needed would be included in the kit and has worked very closely with Sam to be able to put together um, the beautiful, beautiful kits, which will be delivered in time for Christmas as well. Punch needle, your instructions, drawn out, ready to go, your lovely templates with your tulips, all of your yarn, everything that you need, your lovely colours. Even though it's a beginner's piece. Do you know, whenever you're starting a new skill or a new hobby and anything that's stitching, I remember when I first started cross stitch and I was thinking, it just looks babyish though, some of the designs that you would have as a beginner where it looks very basic, whereas these still look very advanced. It looks like something I'd be really, really proud to have on the wall. You're doing it on the lovely monk's cloth. You're getting all of the tools uh, that you need. So whether you're going for the tulip, whether you're going for the rainbow, or for the cat, or all three. How amazing would these look in your workroom? Absolutely love it. And we're always looking for a new little hobby, a new skill. If you're a sewer or a dressmaker, if you just want to sit and do something away from the sewing machine, watching the TV maybe, something that's quite portable, just breaks up the day a bit. So, Sam, it's so lovely to have you back. Thank it's you. lovely to see you. Um, we both walked in and went, I know you want the telly. <laughs> and I was like, I know you want the telly as well. Thank um, you. These kits, it's something that we've never done on Yarn Lane, isn't it? So I, I, I yeah. don't feel too out of my depth when I say <laughs> I'm completely new to this. So can we go right back Absolutely. to basics? Absolutely, yeah, from the beginning, yeah, so definitely. So punch needle, this is uh, a, a technique that you do in a hoop. Yes, yeah, yeah. so it's basically making stitches onto fabric and okay. it's just a really fun, simple, effective way of embroidering onto fabric without the hard work of using your needle. So right. you've got the punch needle that does all the hard work for you. Oh, that's so, so good, isn't it? And yeah. you say this is suitable for any age, any, any age, ability. Anyone can do it. There's a bit of a knack, which I'm going to show you today, but once you've got the knack, anyone can do it. So my oh. children love it. My nine-year-old daughter, she loves it. So. so you've been working with Rebecca to be able to put together. The, yes, the, she, like she said, requested the cat. The she cat. requested, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This is so good. Yeah. I love yeah. that cat. It's just amazing. <laughs> Loads of you have got these in your baskets just so you know if you do want the uh, the cat be aware that that is going to sell out quite quickly um, I think since we've been going through a lot of people are saying oh I'll have that and then I'll have that and then I'll have that one so grab them all if I were you so how do we set ourselves up okay. ready to start so you've got your basic materials yeah so you've got your hoop so in the kit you get a 20 centimeter embroidery hoop yeah 
um, and you need your monk's cloth. So this is a specialised fabric that you used for punch needle. Okay. It's really, it's the best thing to use really, especially as a beginner, because it's got an even weave. Um, the way the fabric is made makes it ideal for punch needle. Well, you can see very, very clearly, you know, sometimes if you're doing any, uh, in, uh, cross stitch or things like that and it's on a linen where you're really struggling to see each square exactly. you can see it really clearly on yes this, you can you? see the little squares so this is called a 12 count monk's cloth okay which means there's 12 squares per inch right. and you can use that to guide your punch needle when you're doing it so you've got that sort of visual aid there as well brilliant um, and the monk's cloth does fray a bit you can see a couple of frayed ends here which i will trim off in a minute but I have edged it all for you, oh. so you, it won't fray. It might fray a tiny bit, just trim those bits off, but I've sealed it by sewing around it with a zigzag stitch, so it's not going to damage your piece of work at all. Oh, I see, that so. is attention to detail. <laughs> and you've drawn on the, the uh, And the templates. I've drawn on the templates, yes. Oh. So every, every one comes with the template drawn on. Fantastic. So, yeah, so you've got your hoop, you've got your monk's cloth, and of course you've got your punch needle. Right, now this looks quite a contraption actually. <laughs> An adjustable um, punch needle. Now yes. this is these are everything that you sort of need to get going. I'm not going to need to go out and purchase any other. No, the, and this one, it. this one especially is brilliant because um, it's adjustable. Right. So you can get punch needles in two different sizes. So this is a regular one where um, it's got a bigger hole at the top there, so the needle itself is bigger. But you can also get fine ones which mm -hmm. use a thinner yarn. So for a beginner, this one is perfect. And the great thing that I love about this punch needle is it's adjustable, so you can change the size of your loops. Right. So I'll talk a bit more about that later. Okay. But it's a bit, it looks a bit like a pen. Yeah. But as you move it, this needle at the end here changes in length. Oh, yes. And you can make different length loops with it. So that gives you such a great opportunity to be creative. So do I need to change this uh, this part of the tool? No, this stays exactly as it is. Okay. All you do is you adjust the length of your needle. Which right, I'll talk so I can use this time and time again. Use this time and time again. So if you love this, you can go on to make lots of other things oh, using the same brilliant. needle. So yeah, and then I've also put in a needle threader that I'll talk about in a minute, which is what the thing with the button is. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So you do get a needle threader in your in your um, packaging with your Millwood's punch needle, mm -hmm. but they do often break um, and it can be very frustrating when you're getting started and you're trying to thread your yarn and then it breaks. So I've made you one as well, oh, <laughs> which is really straightforward, but yeah. So you really have got absolutely everything you need to get started with. I love that, everything. I mean, that is such attention to detail, isn't it? This is what we love about Yarn Lane, by the way. I know Rebecca has been sourcing some, you know, fantastic independent artisans. I mean, you put all of your kits together yourself. Yes. It's, yeah. Especially with the year that we've had, I think yeah. everybody's looking for something to do that's quite mindful. Absolutely, and definitely. Slowing down a bit. Yeah, this is Perfect. brilliant for mindfulness. It's repetitive, it's straightforward so you don't get frustrated. Yeah. It's, it's a really easy thing to do, as you say, you can do it in front of the telly. Yeah. You can do it with your children. It's really fun to do with children or even when you, you've taught them, they can do it on their own, which is great. So. Right, yeah. so once you've got your uh, your month's cloth in your hoop. Yes, so as I say, that all comes, it will look like this when you open up your bag. Brilliant. So it's in your hoop, your template's drawn on, everything's ready to start and do the fun bit. So just make sure that your monk's cloth is nice and tight in your hoop. So just give it a stretch because it might have got loosened up in the post. So you always want this monk's cloth to stay nice and tight and then you're ready to start going. Okay. You can even um, just twist the screw bit at the top there to tighten yep. it. Then you thread the needle. So it's like a drum. It's just like yes, a... Yes, you want it that like tight. Yeah, exactly. So if it loosens up, it'll be tricky to work. So you want right. it as tight like a drum. Yeah. And then I'm going to demonstrate how to get started using this one. Mm -hmm. So on the three designs that you've got there, as you notice, they all look a bit different. Yeah, they've got different dimensions. Different sort of textures, yeah. exactly. So when you're using a punch needle, you can make different types of stitches with it. So you can make flat stitches or you can make loopy stitches. So the flat stitches you make on the front and then the loopy stitches are on the back. So if you turn that one over, yeah. you can see on the back you've, you've got, got that loops. sort of texture with the loops. And you can use either side actually, right. both sides look beautiful. So with the rainbow you've got your loopies at the on front. On the front, exactly. So for the rainbow, which I'll demonstrate next, you've got the loopy bits for the clouds and for the actual rainbow and then flat stitches for the background. Right, yeah. So that's where it's really fun because you can play about with texture and you can choose 
where you want those textures to be. So then for the cat's face, you've got it as flat, and yeah. then for the, the details, yes. um, you've I've got your loopy. Oh! <laughs> yeah. So, so is, there no, is there a rule of which one? Can you mix them at No, all? you can choose. You oh, can be brilliant. really creative with it. It's completely up to you what effect you want from it. So the more you get experience with it, the more fun you can have with that. Is there an easier one to start the with? The flat stitch is probably the most straightforward in terms of getting a nice effect from it. So okay. that's what I'm going to show you start first. Start with the flat The flat then. stitch. So that's the one from the front. So the tulip I've made completely in flat stitch. So worked completely from the front. Yeah. Which you can see there. But you can choose to do the opposite. I'll show you what more as we go. I love it. It's just <laughs> so tactile. It's very it. tactile. It's just such an effective thing to do. It's okay. Oh, we had lots of lovely messages. Um, who's this? Sorry. Hi, Lindsay. Lindsay says, love the design, Sam. I would highly recommend <laughs> any of Sam's kits. They are they are designed so well and easy to oh, follow. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you very much for your messages. So, where? Do, where how do you start it off? Then? So, how do you thread? threading the punch needle. Yeah. So. You need to thread from the tip. So you've got this metal tip and then you've got the handle. Yeah. With your threader, you can use the one in the kit. It looks just the same, it's just a bit finer. It's a piece of wire folded in half. So you've got a loopy end. So if I just might just struggle to do this, but let me just open it up a bit so you can see. Can you just come slightly to your left, please? Sam? Yes, no problem. Thank you. So it's basically just a loop of yarn, which is hard to see on there. How about if I hold it on there? Yeah. So you want this loopy bit here to go through the punch needle. So from the front, from the tip of it, push that loopy bit, so I'm just gonna fold it in a bit, through there, and it's just a tube, so it's just gonna go all the way through, and it's gonna come out the other end. Right, oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> so this is the threader. So get the end of your yarn, and just push that into the loop there. Ah, uh, I'm with you. Okay, and you're just gonna going. put it through so the yarn comes out the other end. And then the needle's got a little eye to it. Should I just put it on top of there so you can see a bit better? Thank so it's you. got this hole in it. Right. And you want to get this yarn from the inside going through that hole. Now I'm using my fingers, but you can use your threader again if you'd like to, if you find it fiddly. So it comes out the other side. So you've got the yarn coming from the handle end mm -hmm. all the way through through the open part and out the other side. Right. So it's coming out the back of it. I'm, I'm with just, you. I'm just going to pull it. You don't need a lot of yarn coming out the top right, here. Right, so you don't need a big tail. Just a tiny centimetre or two will do. And it won't come unthreaded? It won't come, well, just be careful. I have made the mistake myself where I've pulled this ball to get myself in position and it has pinged out yeah. and I've had to thread it again. But yeah, just it won't come out of the fabric at all. That's all you need to get started. So, you're going to trace the outline first of all. So I'm starting with the flower heads. So do you do all the same colour first? So you look so at what parts I would, want. Yeah, I would look at it and kind of break it down into shapes. Mm -hmm. So you want, I'm going to start with the flower heads in pink. I'm going to do one at a time, and I'm going to outline it first and then fill in the inside. Okay. So I'm going to do, if I was sitting at home doing it, obviously I won't do it all today, but I would do one at a time for these yeah. flower heads. So you want to outline the whole outline here. So it's like drawing. You draw the outline first and then you colour it in. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that you hold your pencil? Yes. Needle? So you want to hold it with the open end facing forward. That's going to lead us. And then the tail here, coming out of the back, is going to be, always be behind the work. You'll see what will happen is that will pop through in a minute. And is that a sharp end? It's, it's, it's not as sharp as a standard needle, but just be careful if children are using it. At first, okay. you'll need to supervise and fix it. Occasionally, I've jabbed it into my finger, but it's not too bad. It's not, you wouldn't be able to do any damage, I don't think. They'd just get an ouch. <laughs> so one tip before you start, make sure you have lots of yarn coming out the end of the handle here. So. If the, this kind of is, goes against the grain for people that knit and crochet because you're used to everything having to be tight, mm -hmm. but this is the opposite. It needs to be really loose. And I would also suggest having the ball of yarn on the same surface that, that you're working on. Right, so you are, you're not going to trim off any uh, length, you're working it's, from the ball. Oh, it's all working from the ball and you want it nice and loose. Okay. I mean, with, with crochet and knitting, you pull it tighter, tight. but don't, don't do that or okay. it won't work. So. As I said, the open bit's leading forward. You're going to hold the punch needle so that it's pointing right down into your work. Right, vertical. Okay, completely vertical. Yeah. Push it down until the handle hits the fabric. 
Mm -hmm. So my handle is right up against the fabric there. Yeah. And then you're going to pull it back gently so that the needle point comes to the top of the surface again. Yeah. And the really important thing is that you keep your point of your needle in contact with the fabric at all times. Right. So it's going to brush slightly along the fabric as you move forward. So you can see I've got this open part of the needle leading the way. That's really important. And where you've got your little squares in your fabric, you want to go roughly two squares forward along the outline. Okay. So you can use that as a guide to make evenly spaced stitches, so two yeah. or three squares. And then push it just back down through, pull it out again. And can you see I've made a stitch, but yes, yeah. keep contact with the fabric at all times. So where it can go wrong is if you lose contract, contact with the fabric. So I'll just do a few to get those in place and then I'll demonstrate what I mean by that. So you're just dragging it along, you're not lifting it completely exactly. out. Exactly, no, don't lift it completely out, you're scraping it. Scrape sounds rough, it's not, you're just brushing gently yeah. <laughs> the surface yeah. of the fabric. Just, just gently keep it in contact and this becomes second nature once you get going. I tell you what, this comes together so much quicker it's than It's so quick, embroidery. it's just such great fun because it's so quick, it's really effective. Look, I've already done a bit of an outline there. Nice, that's <laughs> It's amazing. really great, isn't it? Oh, how satisfying is it's that? Especially so when you're learning satisfying. something new, exactly. you want to see the results. Exactly. So I need to turn it now because my outline carries on around the corner. So you want to turn it when you've got your needle, your punch needle in the work, the handle's right up to the fabric, turn the work mm -hmm. and then remember as you bring it out you want the open part to be leading the way. So move the hoop, not the needle. Exactly, move the hoop, so again I need to turn it, I'm turning the hoop, not the needle. Yeah. Just to follow, so it's kind of giving me the direction to go in. The monk's cloth, is it difficult to sort of penetrate through? Do you have to give it quite a uh, jab? The first couple of stitches, you, it takes a bit of adjustment to get used to, but then actually, no, it's surprisingly straightforward yeah. after that. And I mean, you've stopped now and you're talking to me and you just left <laughs> it I leave inside. it in, yeah, okay. leave it in if you're ever going to put it down because, well, let me show you because I know a few people commented when I put on the fans page I was going to be doing this, yeah. that they've tried it and they couldn't get the knack. So I just want to show you some of the things that might not work so yeah. that you can come back to this when you're having a go. So, if it does come out and you lose contact with the fabric, ah, this is exaggerated, yeah, that's what and then it's not going to work when you push back down in. So sometimes, you know, you might just get distracted and pull it out a bit too much. So that's not going to make a stitch. So just gently pull the yarn at the top there so it tightens up a bit again, keeping the, uh, the needle in contact with the fabric and start punching again. So it's really easy to remedy that. How easy is it to sort of if you've gone, if you think, right, I'm not quite happy with the shape, at least you've got your template, so fingers crossed everybody will be happy. But can you go back a stitch? Really easy, okay? So if okay. it's not going to plan, you can just pull it out. And see where you've got these holes where you've punched? Yeah. Because it's an even weave fabric, bit of a scrape, both sides, the holes have gone. Oh. It's good as new, and so you're ready Brilliant. to start punching again. So it's really easy. Take it out if you're not happy with any of the stitches. That's so good, isn't it? <laughs> it's really fun. So just, to, just to, I can't tell you strongly enough. Keep this bit loose. Yeah. Because when I've taught this to people, this is where they go wrong. And maybe, I mean, my nine-year-old daughter, it kind of gets caught under her arm sometimes. She says, it's not staying in, Mum. It's because this bit has got tight underneath the right. um, okay. work. So just make sure this bit is looser. Okay. Looser than you think. So nice, you know, pull off a metre or so, half a metre, let it just lay on the surface you're working on. And that's really how you get the neck. So I'm just continuing to punch. You can see, you know, once you get the hang of it, you can go quite quickly. I'm going to go all the way around the tulip head. You can go a bit slow, well, but I'm just... quite sort of mindful because <laughs> you are doing the repetition. Exactly. Let's get rid of this little tail here. So snip there. You can just snip that off and it's not all going to come and gather. No, it's not going to come. It's amazing. That's all there is to it. The fabric holds the stitches in place. Ah. I'm just going to use the point of my scissors here just to pop that down. So you want... This is going to be the right side of my work. So hang on. Do I need to put a knot in that? No. no. Just pop it down into there. Turn it over. You can see the, the effect you get from the loops on the yeah. other side. It's there. You can even trim it. It's not going to come out. Oh, 
good. So it gets everything we sort of know, like you say, is knitting and crochet. It goes against and like instincts when you knit and crochet. Yeah. So you want to, you know, the more stitches you get in there, the more they'll hold on to each other as well. So you're just going to keep going till you've outlined the whole thing. Make sure, so again, I'm making sure it's not caught up here. And I'm going to keep going forward. If there's any bit you don't like, you can take it out. Okay, and I just want to show you that once you've got to the end, just keep your uh, punch needle in there, mm -hmm. and then you're going to just continue filling it in by following this outline around and around and around in decreasingly smaller shapes and right. it will colour it in for you or fill yeah, it in. Yeah, from the outside in. Outside in. Again, keeping it nice and even if you can with your stitches. But you can play about with that. That bit comes with practice. And keeping your stitches close together. So for example, this one, it's a little bit far apart. So I'm just going to pop that out and make it a bit closer together. And at the end, if you've got any gaps, you can just fill them in anyway. Yeah. So. Kat's got a question. I'm trying to work out what you mean, Kat. So we're going round and round here. If we went up and down, does that change the sort of top to bottom? Does that change the look of the stitch? It just changes the look of it. So that's certainly something to play with. I mean, you'll be able to see from all of mine, they've got a circular kind of look, the way I've filled in the details. Yeah. There's nothing to stop you going up and down. It will just make a different effect. And right, that's definitely okay. something you can play with. Yeah, lovely. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, and if you look with the cat, so again, it's the same technique. You've gone round the outside and then carried on round the outside. Filling the in outside. the details, exactly that, yeah. Do you layer on top of it? So, you know when you've done these extra details and the eyes, is that on top of your already? No, 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 it's not. That will be that's quite tricky to achieve. So in a moment, I'll come along to the cat and I'll show yeah. you. But you don't want to layer on top. It just doesn't really work. Okay. So you want to try so and that isn't all the how you next create to each the other. texture. No, it isn't from layering it. No, it's from sitting them next to each other. Okay. So you're kind of filling in gaps next to each other in the textures that you want. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead. No now. problem. I'm ahead. <laughs> Go on. I'm just. No, no, that's fine. So, I mean, really, with this um, tulip. Yeah. I, all I need to do now is just keep going around and around and filling it in. And you'll see, you can really see once you've got the knack of it, how quickly it grows. You just go to your left again, sorry, slightly. Sorry. Perfect. Thank you. And then turning it, and then that's all there is really to the tulip. So you do the flower heads, then you do the green. I've actually accidentally filled this one in, but the, the top ones you'll see, I've done this little back leaf, petal, sorry, here in a lighter pink, but you can do that afterwards. And then you've got the green that you do for the leaves. So it's exactly the same technique for the whole of the tulip. You've got the flower heads and then the green leaves and then yeah. you just fill in the background. That's so good, isn't it? <laughs> and it's exactly the same technique of when you start and stop, you literally are trimming I'm it and then you're going to Literally, you only want a centimetre or so when you come to trim it. So I'm fastening off now. Snip there. You can fasten off at any point. If you're halfway through it and you want to stop and you don't want to worry about the work coming out, just fasten it off and, you're and then restart. Your I'm using the closed. No, it doesn't make a hole. Just use the closed together scissors just to the end there to poke it through. Or you can turn it over and put it through. And then That's you can so see good. on the back there the other effect, the loopy effect. We're desperate <laughs> to have a go at this. Just so you know, a third of the stock of the tulips have gone. We've got a message come through. Hi, Sandra. Good morning or good afternoon, lunchtime. Uh, this is an amazing tutorial. <laughs> Tried needle punch ages ago and gave up due to problems with the yarn, etc. Um, I'm defo going to try it again. Brilliant. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Well, I highly recommend it. It's such fun. You won't regret it. Does it's it make really a difference fun. in what yarn? you use does it have to be a specific kind no, of no you can use any yarn at all so it's a great hobby for knitters and crochets because you can stash bust with it yeah. so any you finished a blanket you've got a load of ends that need finishing off you can use them to make a punch needle picture oh so good so you can with this punch needle you can use any yarn weight from double knit up to super chunky okay we're using Aran weight today and that's yeah. a good starting point for beginners so you've got all the yarn you need in your kit brilliant but there's also a fine punch needle which uses finer yarns, which we might do another day. But yeah. yeah, so you can use any yarn. It doesn't have to be wool. Wool creates such a lovely effect that I've given you the wool yarn. But you can use acrylic, anything, cotton. Mm -hmm. Oh, brilliant. And it That's has different so effects. good, isn't it? So once you've got the hang from the beginner's kit, you can yeah. then have a try yourself with whatever you've got at home. Absolutely. Brilliant. <laughs> and you've got everything that you need to get started. Absolutely you've got the everything. Tools. And, yeah. And that's what I like as well. When you're investing and starting a new hobby, it can be very expensive, can't it? So yeah. actually to say in your kit at 34 99 
you've got the tools as well to get started. Exactly, yeah, and you, you end up with that beautiful picture that you can put anywhere you like, so. I, I'm not sure whether you've just answered this, Sam, but there was a question that's just come in. Is the yarn double knit or four ply? That yarn there is Aran weight. So the yarn you get in the kit is Aran weight. Okay. So yeah, and that's the best one to use when you're getting started. It's just the most straightforward, Perfect. especially for the size of punch needle. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you ever so much. So uh, just be careful if you've got the tulip one in your basket because there is a lot of you that have got that one in your <laughs> basket. And so they're, they're your flat stitches. They're the flat stitches. So the whole tulip picture is made with flat stitches, mm -hmm. but there's nothing to stop you using the loopy side you can see um, oh, from the yeah. back of it I mean there's nothing to stop you using loops to create which I'll show you next how to do could I do it part definitely part. so if I want to yeah. do the tulip heads in my fluffy yeah and, and then yeah, the, and then the flat background stitch, flat definitely yeah so that's where you can have a lot of fun playing about with that difference in texture I love how many times we've said loopy this hour loopy <laughs> <laughs> takes on a whole new meaning yeah. <laughs> so you're now going to show us the rainbow I yes. love this and especially this for this year Exactly. I think this is perfect. It's become really symbolic, hasn't it, the rainbow? Oh, my word, yes. It means a lot to everybody. So that would be great hung in your window to show support for the NHS or something. Absolutely. Yeah. I think this would be a really beautiful gift. So just to remind everybody, in the kit for the rainbow, you again have everything Absolutely you need. Absolutely everything, yeah. So you've got, again, the template drawn on. So it comes all ready for you. Templates drawn on, the monk's cloth is sealed so it's not going to fray. You might get these tiny bits of fraying, but don't be afraid to pull those off because I've sealed it, so it's not going to go any further than that. So what got, does that mean? How, so how you've have got you sealed a zig it? With my sewing machine, I've sewn around every single square, oh, so with a zigzag stitch. <laughs> so you can do it with um, uh, masking tape as well, but this, that's, this is the most effective way to seal it. So yeah, so I sealed it, I've drawn the template, you open your kit and it looks like this, ready to go. Perfect. So with the rainbow, I've had a lot more fun with the loops. Yes. So, so clouds, textures. I wanted to be really fluffy, and I've also made my rainbow a little bit loopy. So, in fact, actually, these are all different sizes. So you've they got are. the flat in the background, then the rainbow is slightly more raised, and then the clouds, clouds are, are even, even more. Fluffier. Exactly. Yeah. So I've used the different. I had fun with my punch needle using the different settings there. So you say not all punch needles have that ability get, to adjust. No, not all of them are adjustable. You get fixed ones as well. But okay. when I was planning these kits, I thought it's just such fun to play about with the loop sizes. Yeah. So I wanted to put an adjustable needle in for you. Perfect. So um, with the cloud, you're going to make the loopy stitches. Again, it's completely up to you. There's no need that for it to be loopy, or you can do some loopy, some not, but this is how I've done it. So I'm going to start with the white. I'll do the cloud first. So again, just to recap the threading. So you're putting the looped part of the wire through the needle, remembering that it's a, a tube, so it'll just come out the other end she says, eventually, there we go. And then you're going to put the yarn through that loop and then you pull the button end back through. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. And then you want this part, this end of this yarn here to come through the eye. So it comes through the open part and out the back. And it's got a nice big eye, hasn't it? It it's has, it's fiddly. easy to do yourself. You could use the yarn threader though if you find it fiddly. Okay, and again, I'm taking lots of yarn off so it's nice and loose. Yeah, don't forget that. That's It's really important. That's where it can be difficult. So keep that loose. And then I want to make these... Oh, I need to change my size of my <laughs> punch needle. Right, so what sizes Nearly are there? It's that. got A, B, C and D. That's right. So D is the shortest loop, D make, which is what I use for the flat that's one. That's flat. Okay, Because you don't want flat. to waste yarn, so you may as well keep that short. So I'm going to move this one up now to see, and if you watch the length of the needle there, it's just going to get longer. So I've gone up to C to make longer loops. So the length of the needle shows you an idea, it gives you an idea of how long your loops will be. Sorry, we just show that again, because it was looking at the handle. So, so to, sh to look at the needle, so yeah. you start with a D, that's the short one that we yeah. use for the tulip. Uh -huh. And then I'm just going to push this up so that it's on the setting C which makes the needle length longer. And right. just so you can see, if I just turn it like that, um, if you go up to B, it gets longer again. Uh. And then you've even got A, which is and what, even what longer. what could you get with that? A massive one. Okay. Yeah, it'd be really <laughs> long. Just be um, aware, obviously, the longer the loop, the more yarn it uses up. So for the rainbow, did you use D for the flat? Yes. 
C for the medium. C for the clouds and actually oh, D so but from the other side for ah. the loopy for the actual rainbow. So you physically turned it over and did flat stitch again. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I'm with you. So Brilliant. when you come to outline the clouds, so remember I've got it on C now, so it's mm -hmm. slightly longer. I'm working from the front, but what you just to make the point that the back of it is going to become the front of my work. So I'll explain okay. a bit more what I mean now. Oh, I'm just going to tighten that up like I said, because I could feel then that was a little bit loose there and it might not make the, let the stitches sit tight enough. So if you find... Um, You're not going to warp your fabric by pulling that too No, tight. not at all. The tighter it is, the better the stitches will sit. Okay. And you might want to tighten it up at regular intervals as you're working. Yeah. The more stitches you get in there, you might find it loosens a bit. So just stop, take a breath, tighten it up. Mm -hmm. Tighten the screw on the top. And you can stop because this is how long do you think a project like this would take? It takes me a couple of hours. So if you do want to yeah. stop and have a break, you just leave your needle Definitely. in. Definitely, yeah. No okay. problem with taking a break with it. So I'm going to do the clouds. I'm going to outline them exactly the same as I showed you before. Make sure you can see. Thank you. So exactly the same. I'm keeping my needle in contact with the fabric. I'm moving the tip of it forwards a couple two to three squares every time nice even stitches and I start with the outline just like I did with the tulip and I just want to show you on the back if I can just go around a little bit more oh that's what I meant oh. it will sometimes come out okay okay right, so this is good that this is yeah, happening it, it will happen it home, will happen what do I do so you just Push it all back in. Don't want my yarn was that in there. You push too, too. It was hard. a little bit. Yeah, it wasn't quite. Do you know, I said at the beginning it wasn't quite tight enough. I probably didn't tighten it up quite enough. Okay. So I'm just going to spend a moment tightening that. So if it gets a bit loose, it might ping out like that. Don't panic. It might happen. It happens to all of us when we're doing it. Take a moment. Tighten it up. That's why I sort of said, make sure you take a breath. Tight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Tighten it up again. Get ready to go again. Tighten that there, and then, okay, and then you're ready to go again. So remember how I said you can pull that yarn up there, mm -hmm. and then you're ready to go again. And just to turn that over and show you, you can see the bigger loops that's making on the back, yeah, yeah. and that's going to be the big loops on the cloud. So you're not actually pulling this and sort of looping it at all, no. any differently to how you did your flat stitch. No, it's the exactly. Tool that's doing it's the, the loops. Work. Exactly. It's the length I've set my tool to that's making those loops. Okay. Okay. And then just continuing on. And what will happen is you're doing exactly the same as you did before, but the thing to remember. So again, it's catching on there, so let's just pull that there. Is that this is going to become the front of it. Right, okay. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going round. Like so. And you can take a bit more time, make sure your stitch is a bit more evenly spread than mine. So I've gone all the way around the cloud. And now I'm going to fill that in exactly the same as I described with the tulips. Yeah. So keeping your stitches close together, evenly spacing them. Okay, again, you can take a bit more time, make sure yours are evenly spaced and close together. But I just want to show you on the back there the effect you get. Right. So you've got those loops coming through like that, and that's going to be the front of your work. Right, so, so if, if I am uh, wanting to create this texture from the reverse as well, um, do I need to do the tra transfer the template onto the back as well? Or? So if you wanted to just if you just wanted to work from the back, what I would do if you wanted to do that is outline the whole thing first yeah. with your yarn. Okay. So you've got the template here. So if you thought you wanted to... Um, make an outline that you would then use to fill it in from the back. Yeah. Outline it all in the flat stitches, first of all. Good idea. And then use those as your guidelines on the back. Perfect. So I'm not so having to draw it all out For example, exactly. If, if with the tulip you then decided you wanted to make some loopy stitches, and so start working through from here, you can see you've got that outline to guide you. Perfect. So you can do it like that. But with the cloud, because I'm making so much of it loopy, yeah. the cloud and then the rainbow, I'm going to do it all from the front first and then turn it over. Yeah. So shall I demonstrate a bit yeah, of the rainbow absolutely. next? Okay, so that you'll not take that out. 
Okay, and then I'm going to do a bit of the rainbow next. So I'll get my blue. Because the only difference with the rainbow is I'm going to change the size of the loops. And do you get enough um, yarn in the kits to be able to do loopy or flat? Or yes, you've got at least double the amount of yarn in oh. there that you need. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I always like to be cautious. Yeah. So you've got plenty of yarn in there if you want to play about. Okay, so I'm going to thread the blue on there. So just exactly as I did it before. Okay, and you, as I said, you can use your needle threader, but I'm just going to push it through like so. And now I'm going to adjust this needle to make slightly smaller loops. So it's on C at the moment. I'm going to bring it down to D. So that was the same as I used for the flat stitches. But because I'm working from the front to make the other side of it the front of it, you'll see how you get a smaller loop. Oops, let's not have that there. Let's move along a bit, that's it. Okay. Samantha says, I keep losing my threaders. She says, because they're nearly invisible. The button one is a good idea. Yeah, and it's so easy. It's just a piece of jewellery wire folded in half. It's so much better than the ones that come with the, the um, mm -hmm. punch needles. Christine's also said, Sam is, makes it look very easy, but just to let everybody know, it is easy. It is. It is. <laughs> oh, well done, Christine, it is. It is so easy. It's so, it's so fun. Effective. And it's so quick. Yeah, I just, honestly, I can't recommend it highly enough. Without looking childish, do you know what I mean? It's exactly, still got... Exactly, it's, like, it's got a grown-up look to it, yeah. hasn't it? It's very effective. Uh, Gwendol, so what's the fabric that you're using? So this is Monk's Cloth. Okay. So this is an even weave fabric. It's the best one for getting started with punch needle. It just holds the stitches really well. Right. So it's got... You've got the little squares there. You get monk's cloth in different counts. This is a 12 count monk's cloth, yep. which describes the number of squares per inch. Right. And when I say it's even weave, it's woven across from one side to the other. So when you put your hook through, that's what grabs the yarn. Right. So that just, it, yeah, it's a specialist kind of fabric that's great for any kind of embroidery, but especially for punch needle. So I just, I'm doing this quicker. You, as I said, you can take your time. I just want to show you on the back how you've made that outline there. Uh -huh. And these loops are slightly smaller in height, as you notice, than the cloud ones. Yeah. So as you go around and you fill it in, this is going to become the front. So let me just do a little bit more. So I just want to make that clear what I mean by that. And again, you can do yours much neater because you won't be trying to demonstrate in a hurry. But go all the way around. And if there's any loops that you make that you think, well, that one's sticking up a bit too much, just pull it down from behind. So you can really fiddle with it and make sure it sits how you want it to. I suppose this is something, once you get the knack of it, it's like crochet, once you exactly. understand it, you just almost... The only it. challenge with this is getting the knack of it. And the main thing is keeping this yarn coming out the top of your handle nice and loose yeah. and keeping your tip of your needle in contact with the fabric all the time. So when my nine-year-old daughter, Olive, she'll love the fact I said her name. Hi, Olive! <laughs> when Olive is doing it, sometimes this yarn gets caught up. She'll say, Mom, it's not working, it's got caught up. And I'll say, look, it's underneath your arm or something, and she's leaning like that. Right. Or she's pulled her needle out like I have just now, so just pull that bit at the top and it tightens up again. Those are the main problems you might have with it. So if you find that you are struggling to get your first few stitches in, just try those tips. Um, and you'll find that it will all sit much better. And then the more stitches you get into it, the easier it is. As with all these crafty projects, once you get started, yeah. you're away. So it, with it, Adventures in Crafting, do you do all sorts of crafts then, Sam? I do. I mainly do crochet, um, but I also do this. I've been doing some rag wreaths towards Christmas. I've oh. done candle making in the past. Oh, so, lovely. And do you yeah. normally do sort of workshops or classes? It's, it's mainly, it, yeah, it's workshops and classes. Uh, it has been in a studio, but with yeah. lockdown, it's all gone on to Zoom. Brilliant, though. That's so really good. So it's just brilliant. I've been, I've really enjoyed it. And it means I can reach people from all over the country. Yeah. So I've now, oh, and other countries. So I've got... Yeah. Customers from Scotland and Yorkshire, it's just great. And and it's whereas, yes, it would be brilliant for you to do your workshops again. It probably opens up so exactly, many doors to still do exactly. the online. So, um, so many people have been able to join the classes yeah, that couldn't before. That yeah. So moving forward, I think I would like oh, to go. go. Back. Yeah, there they are. That was uh, Very popular one, of my, uh, yeah, one of my Zoom classes recently. 
amazing. Yeah, so it's been great. And all my customers have come with me onto Zoom, so I can't thank them enough because yeah. that has just been brilliant. All the ones I'd normally see face to face. So I'm just moving along now. I wanted to get to a point where I'd filled in a shape to see, to show you. Sorry, me chatting. No, no, you. no, not at all. I'm happily punching away here. So you don't need to concentrate <laughs> too much on this. It's really good. So I'm coming to the end of this first part of my rainbow. And you can see from the front, it looks lovely. So that's where you've got your flat stitches. Let's see the moment of truth when I turn it over. So again, pull it, cut Snip it. Snip it. And push Don't, it back in. Yeah, now I'm not going to push it back in because this ah. is going to be the back. But oh, yes, yes, normally you want the push back, the um, ends on the wrong side. Yeah. Turn it over. This is going to be the lovely, front. Lovely. Oh, so, I love yeah, it. so if there's any bits you're not too happy with, so I want that loop to be a little bit shorter, I'm just going to push it back down with my scissors. So you can fiddle about with it to get it looking absolutely perfect as well. Nice. Now, if, imagine you've finished your rainbow, you've got all of your lovely loopy stitches, your two clouds, your whole rainbow done. Now you're going to do your flat stitches. And is that all your background? So yes, all the background is made in flat stitches. So yeah. Just to show you, you don't have to do this, you could have worked it all from the back, but what I did with the rainbow is I then took it out of the hoop, turned it over, and would you advise doing the background last? Yes, yeah. Okay. I would put all the details in first and then I'd move on to the background. So just, you, because if you do the background first, it's harder to get the details to show up. Yeah. So you want all of those details to show. So put those in, all in first and then add your background in. So I've just turned it over. Imagine I've finished my rainbow and my two clouds. Now I'm ready to do the background. Brilliant. Which I do in flat stitch in exactly the same way as I did the tulips. tulips. Yeah. Well, we've got literally, well, time is running away with us, 10 minutes. So do we want to go on to the cat? Yes. Because this is one Rebecca Reid has requested with Sam specifically, can we do a cat? She did. Um, and this one, when you first initially look at it, you think maybe you do your flat stitches and then you layer up to do other ones, but actually it's different technique. Um, so... How do you do it that you're doing all of this detail, the cat's face, whilst you're in among doing your, your Yeah, your it's, that's, the, that's the challenge. That's the thing that you need to make, make sure that you do first. Right, details okay, first. Okay, so I've, I've got a, here's one I made earlier. Yeah. So you've got all of the details filled in already. So I did his nose first, I did his um, mouth, his whiskers, his eyes. And then when you come to fill in the background, you can be really careful to make sure you don't go over any of those. Okay, so that's in flat stitch, flat stitch. which is D on your <laughs> Yes, that's right, D from the punch, on the punch needle, it's D. It's the shortest setting. The <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and um, what you can do is you can use any, you can really play about, as I said before, whether you want to use the rest of it as loopy or flat stitches. Okay. But one thing I would suggest is when you come to do the, any sort of small details on any punch needle like the face, keep it flat around the whiskers and things because they might get lost amongst the loops if you put loops next to flat stitches. Okay. So that's fine if it's a chunk of colour, so the eyes for example and the nose are fine, but for these smaller, finer details, keep the flat stitches. So if you think, well, I want the whole cat to be fluffy in the gray, just do some a few flat stitches just to outline in the gray around his mouth and whiskers first. Right, okay. And then do the rest loopy. So yep. that'll just make them stand out. So a reason I got this one ready is because I wanted to show you how I went about then putting the loopy stitches in. Yeah. I've done the features, I've outlined him in grey. This is based on my dad's cat, actually. I had to, when Rebecca asked me to do a cat, and I was like, we're all cat lovers in my family. So this is my dad's cat, Reggie. Oh, well, hello, he's a, Reggie. He's a tabby cat, as you can see. So when you turn it over and look at the other side, where you've outlined it, you've got these shapes. So I want these shapes here, which is the tabby markings, to be grey. So, woo, and I want it to be bigger loops. So I'm going to re-thread the needle with the grey. Just push that through like so. You get that the needle thread is in the kit as well, the every, ones yeah. that Sam's using. Every kit has got one of these needle threaders in it. Pull that through. Yarn comes out the other end. So you've got your needle threaded. You get very quick at this. <laughs> you do, you do. Just you get, get the knack of it. Exactly, you do get quick at it. And then I'm going to fill in these spaces. So this is going back to what we said when I was showing you the tulip, that I want loops on the front now. And mm -hmm. because I've got the outlines here, I can use those to guide me. So let's do the top of his head here. 
Okay, so I'm using those grey loops, so you might need to pull them out of the way a bit to go through and sit these grey stitches. Sorry, just twist it a bit. So you've been careful that you're not going through the same hole. I don't, yes, exactly. I want it right next to it, but not overlapping. Okay, what happens if you do? It doesn't matter too much. Occasionally you might push a little bit of the other yarn through, so I would just undo it if that's the case. Okay. What might happen if you overlap it a bit is you might turn it over and see you've got a dark grey sitting on the other side, mm -hmm. but then just take it out. So I'm going to fill him in and make him look fluffy. So if I just go whoops, all the way down there, you can see how I've used that outline of that light grey mm -hmm. to guide me from the back so I get these bigger loops coming through here. Yeah, so and this is I, still on D setting. This is still on D. Yeah. I'm just going to take that out. This is still on D setting, but you can see how you get the loops now are sitting on the front. So that's how you can play about with the texture. Love so that. you're going to have a combination of flat loops and you've got your loopy stitches as well. So flat stitches and loopy stitches. Can is, I just show you one more thing? Yes, Sorry. I was going to ask you, is the one, if you are a complete beginner at this, is there a design that you would think is easier shapes-wise to go for? Um, do you know what? Probably, no, I don't think I would. All, I've kept them all uh, ideal for beginners. So, Brilliant. I mean, I guess the tulip, because it's all flat stitches, but honestly, they're all really straightforward. Yeah. So, And they're all nice shapes to fill. Cat's got a little bit more detail to him, but it's very achievable, okay. really effective. Brilliant. I just want to show you, if I've got time, that there's one last technique you can do, which is what I've done with his ears. So I don't know if you can see there, yeah. but here, oops, his ears are a bit velvety. Yeah, they are. And what I've done for those is I've made loopy stitches and I've trimmed them. Right. So I'm oh, and that yeah. gives you kind of a velvety, a bit like a pom-pom okay. texture. So I just But that's still going to hold in the month. Still class. going to hold, yeah, absolutely. It's magical stuff. It's amazing how it holds. Right, so I'm just gonna bring that through there. Okay. Just while you're setting that up, can I just remind you, at one o'clock, we hand over to Jewelry Maker, where Neil Garrett will be there with Rebecca Reed and a special guest ready for the mask off. So he's all ready. Is that, look at him. Oh my word. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. It's going to be so good. I can't wait for this. So do make sure you tune over to Jewelry Maker. It's the same postage and packaging. If you've bought from Sewing Street or Yarn Lane, you'll just need to buy through the Jewelry Maker website. But we've made sure anybody who's bought today from us, Yarn Lane or Sewing Street, it's still the same postage and packaging. But you need to go over to the Jewelry Maker website. Same login details, I'm sure, as well. But if you're watching on Facebook or online, then start to head over to Jewelry Maker after today's show. Brilliant. Thank you, Sam. Okay, so I've just got the um, cat's inner ear sorted. Yeah. I've come through from behind, just like I showed you with a dark grey, and made yeah. these loops. And now, a new technique, you can snip these loops. You can give them a little haircut. Oh, so and, <laughs> and this makes a velvety technique, which I really like. It's very tactile. So this is just a little detail I did. You can do it on any of the pictures. You can do it on the tulips. It might be nice for the uh, third petal that you've got at the back. And then once you've snipped all the loops, you can then trim them. This gets a bit messy. Trim them to the same height. Go as short as you like. It won't come out. Get rid of all those bits. And you get this really tactile bit that you can... Oh, I love that. You can stroke. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so I didn't it. put as many stitches in as I normally would. So I wanted to demonstrate it. But yeah. the more full it is, yeah. the more of a kind of lovely velvety if, texture you get. If you, you look get. on mine, then you can see that end result. It is really beautifully velvety. So then to finish <laughs> off your uh, to your work, can you just trim it? How how do you uh, so, cut yes, down the monk's So yes, so cut trim the monk. Now I've glued it on the back. You yeah. can sew around and around. You'd have to sew in and out around the frame. Okay. But if you've got a, a bit of glue, a glue gun is ideal. Okay. Trim the monk's cloth so you've got about a centimetre around the edge. So it's sort of like these lengths here, and then just tuck it in and glue it and it will hold. So pull it tight. Before you do that, pull it all tight and then fold it, trim it, trim it across, fold it and glue it. So you can see that, I think, in the, in the ones you've got there that they've just been tucked in. 
yeah. and glued into yeah, place. Absolutely. But if you don't like the idea of gluing, you can sew all the way around to edge it. So yeah. you would, again, tuck it in and then sew all the way around it. Right, but you can see that there, all lovely, neatly finished. It makes a nice, neat finish. And if you want, I left mine so you could see the back of them, but you could back that with a piece of fabric or felt. Right, OK. And then oh, that yeah. covers up the stitches that you don't want people to see. But yeah. I've left them open so you could see the effect. But yeah, you can no, easily do that. Lovely, clean finish, as you can see. Yeah. There you go, lovely clean finish. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, I love all three kits. Thank you ever so much, You're Sam. Welcome. It's been amazing to learn a new skill. Oh, I think so we're going to be busy, Cat, aren't we? In our craft <laughs> club, we're going to have to do more. Um, when are you coming back with us, Sam? I'm back on the 30th of December, <gasps> oh. making these shawls, or scarves, oh. pocket scarves. Do you know what? I was eyeing that up. So was Catra saying, I was admiring that. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah. We'll be I'll there. Be back then. That's the 30th. Brilliant. 30th, thank you yeah. ever so much. Oh, thank it's you. Been lovely to it's meet been great you fun. Well. Thank you. All three kits still available on the website, whether you want the cat, whether you want the tulip, or whether you want the rainbow, you can get them on yarnlane.com or speak to the customer service team 0800 4700 600. It's been such a clear, informative demo that I think every single one of us that has been watching is going, I can do that, let's do it, let's do it. I absolutely love them and they're gorgeous, aren't they? Um, you get everything that you need in your kits. You get your needle punch, you get all of your yarn, you have your, um, you even have your templates already drawn out for you. Um, so absolutely love them. Great kits from Adventures in Crafting. Um, and you'll get them in time for Christmas. Sound like a great project to do on Christmas Day afternoon definitely, when you just definitely. all fall from your Christmas dinner. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> um, we've had an amazing day today. Thank you all so, so much for your company. On Friday, Yarn Lane will be back. And Wendy Orlando is doing some super chunky knits, uh, which you will absolutely love. I'm really excited. Uh, don't forget to tune in to Sewing Street tomorrow morning, bright and early, for our very first show with Wendy Gardner. It's her first presenting show, so please do get your messages in for her. And don't forget, head over to Jewelry Makeup right now or stay where you are on Freeview and Sky because... Dun, dun, dun. You're ready to watch our very own Neil Garrett in a mask off. Rebecca Reed's there as well. So we're going to be watching. We're going to be watching and cheering Neil on in the wings. Uh, thank you for your company over the last couple of days. It's been a pleasure to be with you. I'm in on Monday next week. I'm here next Monday, so I'll see you then with um, Yarn Lane again. Um, right. I think that's it from us, isn't it? Uh, thank you so much for your company. Hand, handing over to our lovely sister channel at Jewelry Maker. Don't forget to check out Over Your Basket. Of course, it's one postage and packaging. Remember, if you're shopping on Jewelry Maker for the kit, their exclusive mask kit, we're going to be uh, watching it now with you. So stay exactly where you are. Let's cheer on our Neil. Come on, Neil. You can win the mask off. Um, it's been a pleasure to be with you today. Um, Jewelry Maker are handing over right after this.